Hey! You're alive! When I dragged you out of the river, I thought you were never gonna wake up. I checked your pockets for ID. A phone, maybe? I hope you don't mind. But all I found was some loose change. So... Wanna tell me who you are? Well, it's nice to meet you. And I'm sorry to pry, but any idea why you were floating down the river? What's the last thing you remember? Really? You're a soldier? But... why are you out of uniform? Oh! Was it a black op? Are you a soldier of fortune? You know what? Don't answer that. I don't think I want to know. But... this should be a piece of cake for someone like you. There are some ruins just behind you. Roman, I think. I need you to go in there and see if you can find a guy named Al for me. He went in there a few hours ago, and he hasn't come out. I've been freaking out, wondering if he's trapped, or injured, or worse. I would have gone in after him, but he made me promise to stay here, no matter what. There's no way I'm leaving without him, so I'm just kind of... stuck here, waiting. I need... what I mean is, I was hoping you wouldn't mind going in there to find him? If you can do that, I can get both of you back to civilization in my boat. Please? Oh, of course. Sorry, I don't mean to be pushy, I just... What do you want to know? Oh, there's not much to tell. Feels like I've spent my whole life in a dead-end job with an endless commute. Know what I mean? Oh, uh, I'd rather not say if it's all the same to you. Alright, fine. Sorry if I sounded cagey, it's just that I don't always get the best reactions when I introduce myself. My name's... Karen. Uh, you're welcome. Always happy to help. Was there anything else you wanted to ask? He's the guy who washed up on the riverbank not long before you did. I thought maybe you two knew each other. I guess not. But maybe the two of you can piece together what you're doing here. In any case, you'll like him, I'm sure. Once you find him, that is. You really don't remember? We're in Italy. This river is the Tiber. Not much, really. But imagine what you might find in there. Priceless ancient artifacts. Al... What am I, an idiot? You could hike a long, long way in any direction and never find another soul. Trust me. Great. So you're ready to go look for Al? Thank you. The entrance is just past those columns behind you. Please, hurry.
If you're reading this, it means I've discovered the entrance to an ancient Roman city hidden deep underground. Its existence is long forgotten, all knowledge of it lost, except in the Latin inscription here. It reads, you who wish to enter the city, step forth and be judged. The virtuous shall be rewarded with eternal life in paradise. The wicked shall find themselves showered in gold, but in vain, for this shall be their final resting place. Could an underground city have remained a secret for all this time? Could people have survived down there? Again. Could people have survived down there against the odds? It seems. There's only one way to find out. If I'm not back in an hour, I'm somewhere on the other side. Consider this an invitation or a warning. Al Worth. Whoever reads this, I'm sorry you had to find me like this. And worse, that you'll suffer the same fate I did. I've spent a lifetime in this place, going around and around in circles, searching for a way out. The inscription was right. There is no way back. In here, there are only two options. Death, or that godforsaken doorway into the past. Mistake of stepping through it. I wanted to set things right. And I tried. I really tried. Whatever I did took me right back to the beginning. Don't make the same mistake. Better to end it all now and find out what awaits you beyond that portal.
Salve, friend. I'm Galerius. Mind telling me who you are and what you were doing in the Shrine of Proserpina? Yeah, you know, agricultural goddess of springtime? You're not from around here, are you? Oh, I see what you did there, changing the subject like that. Nice try, but I'll ask again. Who are you, and what were you doing in the shrine? Uh, no idea what you're talking about. Oh, wait, are you a bit, you know, not right in the head? <sighs> That's all right, friend. Everyone's welcome here. We sort of lose track of the date down here, but it feels like the beginning of spring to me, so I'd say early March? It's 817 AUC. Sorry, you look confused. 817 years since the founding of Rome. Which part of the Empire are you from, exactly? Hey, not so loud. Just saying that name could land you in trouble here. If you haven't heard, his cultists burned down half of Rome last year. Horrible business. I heard Nero executed some of them, but a lot of people are still angry with them, even down here. So, if you're one of them, keep it to yourself. But listen, most folks seem a bit confused when they get here, but you... You seem very lost, and in more ways than one. So, let me make this nice and simple for you. Live by our law here, and we'll all get along just fine. Not laws, law. There's just one, the golden rule, and the punishment for breaking it's... Well, it's kind of horrific. But our magistrate insists we take all newcomers to see him, so I guess I'll let him fill you in. So then, you coming? Follow me. When I first arrived, I couldn't believe there were people living down here. But, as you can see, we've got a nice little... Cerberus lifts his triple head and lets out his threefold graying. Livia, would you stop muttering like Medea over a cauldron? You'll scare away my customers. They follow their trades, imitating their previous lives, but they are ignorant. This again. Ixian turns. Vote for Maliolus for a f- Ah, oh, you're here. I'm so glad you decided to visit. I'm Aurelia. 
And uh, I hope I'm not being too forward, but the moment I laid eyes on you, I was intrigued. I can tell from the way you carry yourself. You're a warrior, like Aeneas on a journey far, far from home. Such bravery. Ugh, coming on a bit strong, don't you think? I take back what I said. Suddenly, I don't find you so intriguing anymore. Let's just forget that ever happened, so we can at least do business. So, what brings you to my tavern? Ugh, let it go. Nothing's going to happen between us. You know, normally, I'd expect you to... Straight to business, huh? I can work with that. As a matter of fact, I do know a way out. I'm happy to tell you all about it, but this is valuable information we're talking about, and I don't just give it out like some cheap oracle. So, how badly do you want it? Is it worth, say, a thousand denarii to you? Well, I can't tell you too much, or you'd figure it out for yourself. But I promise you, you'll never have to spend another hour in this city ever again. Simple. It's a one-way trip, and I'm not ready to go just yet. I like my life here. One day, maybe, but not now. I think of it this way. I have something of value, and I'm willing to share it for a price. That's not unethical. That's just good business. Now, do you want it or not? If I took your money without giving you what I promised, I'd be breaking the golden rule, wouldn't I? And I have no interest in doing that. What's the matter? Can't afford it? Well, perhaps you could take out a loan. I understand Maliolus has lent money to others, on occasion. I just try not to think about it. Drink helps with that. As the saying goes, to drink is human, so we drink. Certainly, for ten denarii. Whatever you like. All right, see ya. You stay away from my money. Unless you want me to slip some hemlock into your next drink, get out!
spear is proof of a degenerate. Greetings, citizen. My name's Horatius. Magistrate Sentius asked me to escort you to him personally. Follow me, please. Follow me. The only thing you really need to understand right now is the Golden Rule. Let me see if I can explain it this way. When I was serving in the Legion, if there was a mutiny brewing in one cohort, the Legate in charge wouldn't waste time finding the bad apples among hundreds. They just divided us into groups of ten, made us draw straws, and whoever drew the short straw had to be executed by the other oh, Don't mind me, Didn't I just live done here. Anything wrong. One of us in ten would die for the crimes of the Collective. We call it decimation. If that seems like rough justice to you, Oh, I wish Horatius would shock. stop letting barbarians because in the here. What do you want? It's exactly ten times worse. The magistrate can explain the rest. I trust He's you can see first. yourself out. What now? I'm a legionary of the first Italica, but there's not a lot of fighting down here. So the Magistrate has assigned me other duties. I act as the Magistrate's right-hand man, keeping an eye on his daughters. Uh, daughter, I should say. And the others, and making sure they're all behaving. I also keep a register of new arrivals. I'm from Liguria, up north originally. I was doing all right for myself, 12 years into my service. Had a nice girl lined up for when it was all over. Not anymore. She's probably figured I'm long gone and moved on by now. I try not to think about it. My commander sent me to deliver a message to Rome. While I was there, I thought I'd do something nice for my girl and pick up a little pendant from a silversmith. That's when the crowd started flooding through the streets, shouting fire. People were screaming, trampling each other. Then some genetric and future chill tried to take advantage of the chaos and pinch my pendant. I remember chasing him through the crowds down towards the river, and then nothing. Blacked out and woke up near here. No idea how I ended up floating so far down river. But I'm fortunate to be alive, I suppose. Ah, don't be. As Seneca the Younger said, difficulty strengthen the mind as labor does the body. That said, Centilla's disappearance has been more difficult than I'd care to admit. He's one of the better commanders I've ever had, that's for sure. Good stoic. Lives by Seneca's words. Treat your inferior as you would wish your superior to treat you. Can't ask for much more than that. I went around asking the same questions when I first arrived. Never did find a way out. But I learned how to accept my situation. To bear trials with a calm mind robs misfortune of its strength and burden. That's from Seneca the Younger if you're interested. I don't see why not. Just make sure I get it back by tomorrow. Of course. Well, as I always say, it's kind of like a divine version of the practice of decimation in the Legion. By threatening to execute one in ten men, the idea is to ensure order and discipline among everyone. 
And it works. If you knew you could be executed because your brother in arms is planning Army. a mutiny, well, you'd bloody well watch him like Hundred Eyed Argus, wouldn't you? Because your only chance of saving yourself is to stop bad things before they happen. Makes us all responsible for keeping each other in check. It's brutal, of course, but effective. The Legion wouldn't be the most formidable force in the world without it. A war crime? Isn't that a contradiction in terms? As Cicero said, in times of war the law falls silent. Seems that way. War crimes. Ridiculous. If you like. All right. We're finally alone. I assume you already know who I am. May I know your name? A curious name, to match a curious accent. But I digress. I see you have the posture of a military man, though your garments are most peculiar. I pray to Mars your skill set won't be necessary here, but time will tell. Now, you're probably wondering why I summoned you, and I'll get to that. But first, take a look at this wondrous place, would you? A secret city built deep in the mountains many hundreds of years ago. Indeed. More importantly, consider the miraculous community we've built here over the last seven months. Twenty-two complete strangers, brought together by the fates, living and working together in our own little paradise. And in all that time, not a single sin has been committed. No fights, no theft, nothing. Have you ever witnessed something so extraordinary as a city without sin? Nor could I, until I came here. But the reason for this, this miracle, is as simple as it is terrifying. If even one person commits a sin here, every last one of us will die. You see, the builders of this place, whoever they were, left inscriptions warning, the many shall suffer for the sins of the one. From what we can gather, breaking the law here will anger the gods and provoke a terrible punishment. Like the curses of Medusa and Midas combined, turning us all to gold. We've come to call it the Golden Rule. It's extraordinary that we've survived as long as we have, and each day I grow more and more afraid that our time in the sun is almost up. And now it seems that day is finally here. All that matters is that somebody in this city is about to break the Golden Rule. Why else would Proserpina send you now? Unless you and I can stop them, our doom is assured. I know that's a lot to take in, and you look like you have questions. Please, ask away. An intelligent question. There was a good deal of debate about that in our first weeks here. Does it refer to crimes, or to some other ill-defined wrong? 
Of course, everyone agrees on the basics. No theft, no assault, and certainly no murder. But beyond that, it was more difficult to reach a consensus. What about lying, insulting someone, blasphemy, trespass, trying to escape, bribery, infidelity, suicide? As magistrate, I had to exercise leadership, and so I made a decision. We must uphold the laws of the Empire to a standard never before seen. And we must honor the peace of the gods, the sacred accord between the gods and the people of Rome. It is only by offering the gods the proper respect that we may prosper as Rome has for centuries. What are you talking about? The Empire is the most civilizing force in the known world. Rome is a beacon of light in the darkness. For 800 years, she has borne great statesmen, philosophers, poets, artists, and engineers. We have comprehensive laws protecting the rights of our citizens, which have unified countless warring tribes all across the Mediterranean and beyond from Gallia to Judea. All our citizens are treated the same, regardless of the color of their skin or their sexual preference. Can you say the same? When our people are starving, they are given food rations. And when they are wronged, they have the right to bring the guilty party before the magistrate. Our laws forbid treason, murder, assault and rape, as well as theft and arson and so on. No other civilization in the world is so advanced, and you have the the hubris to call us barbaric? Of course, what else would we do with those prisoners of war who would otherwise have been executed? And besides, there are laws for their protection as well. On occasion, but our gladiators are almost all volunteers seeking glory, or condemned prisoners who would have been executed anyway. I do not see the harm. Of course, but with fewer rights come fewer responsibilities, and the right to be protected by their fathers and husbands. Uh, you mean the blasphemous cult responsible for burning down half of Rome last year? It's hard to blame the people for being angry about that. Are you talking about our practice of decimation? Of course. We could hardly unite all these warring tribes without a disciplined, formidable legion. Well, right now, you're a long, long way from home. I have made my pronouncement on the subject. Unfortunately, there are still those here who resist, whispering blasphemous and treasonous lies in the shadows. I would be keeping a close eye on them if I were you. You see, in my search for a way to save my people, I learned of an ancient ritual to Proserpina, the goddess of the cycle of life and renewal. It's said to open a doorway in time, so that if the unthinkable happens, one person can pass through it and travel back to the past. And when I saw you arrive in a flash of light from the goddess's shrine, I knew that person was you. You don't belong in our time, do you? Two thousand years? That is unfathomable. Please, tell me, in your time, what did you see? What had become of us, of this city? I have imagined it our downfall a thousand times, but it still breaks my heart to hear the truth of it. All I can tell you is that it's a ritual sacrifice to Proserpina. I stumbled across instructions. 
I have to recite a prayer, and of course, as with all rituals, some sacrifice is involved. Usually that means wine or food, or in some cases, a live animal. In this case, the sacrifice is rather more costly. The life of the person performing the ritual. I don't suppose you saw any sign of me Fear is proof in the future? Of a degenerate mind. Ah. I assume that was me. If I'm forced to perform the ritual, it's going to cost me everything. You'll try to make sure I don't need to use it, won't you? Well, I suppose that's all I can ask for. Well, I believe you're in the best position to go around asking people questions. You're new here, and it'll seem perfectly normal. As for me, well, it pains me to say my attempts to impose order have not earned me many friends. I fear I may not even remain magistrate after today's election. The people here would only treat my curiosity with suspicion. You shouldn't have that problem, though, unless, of course, you get off on the wrong foot. Do you ever stare at a problem for so long that you can't see it for what it is anymore? What's needed here is a fresh pair of eyes. The less I prejudice the independence of your investigation, the better. Me? Why would you suspect me? I've just told you. I'm about to sacrifice my own life to ensure these people have a second chance. What reason could you possibly have to suspect me, of all people? I'm glad you think so. Without trust, without each other, we won't be able to prevent what is about to happen. Well, all right. There are those who wish to vote me out of office so that they can pursue their own misguided political agenda. Frankly, their selfishness and recklessness risk destabilizing the entire city. I would be looking very carefully at them if I were you. You mean you couldn't speak Latin before you arrived here? How strange. But the gods are active here, and their temples and shrines hum with power like nowhere else in the Empire. Perhaps when Proserpina brought you here, she planted the seed of Latin in your mind so that you could better serve her. Indeed. If I understand Proserpina's ritual correctly, that problem should take care of itself. Let me see if I can explain. If you manage to prevent the sin that breaks the Golden Rule, I won't need to bring you here. I won't create the portal, and you will never have been able to come here. Thus, you'll have created a paradox. If this occurs, you should be flung back to your own time, having changed the past for all of us. Make sense? Ah, good. So, are you with me? Can I count on you to figure out who's about to break the Golden Rule? Wonderful. Now, I need you to investigate the city, talk to everyone, help them, if it'll win their trust. I authorize you to enter private homes and inspect possessions and documents, unless, of course, you're asked to leave. Figure out who the culprit is, and as soon as you have a name, come back and tell me immediately. Oh, and one last thing. If I were you, I'd start my investigation by visiting Lucretia at the Shrine of Apollo in the Forum. 
I heard wailing from there not long ago. Seems like something's not right. Fear is proof of a degenerate mind. <laughs> Whatever are you wearing? <laughs> oh, look, you're back. How lucky for me. What is it now? I'm Sentia, eldest daughter of the Magistrate. But you'd know that if you'd been invited in here and introduced properly. What are you doing in here? And why are you dressed like that? Ugh, what is it with you people? You heard the rumor that my little sister escaped and figure I must know a way out too. Is that it? Well, that's just a stupid rumor. We have no idea what happened to Centilla. I wish you mouth breathers would just leave me alone. I don't know. Can you? Can you tell me how a person could have disappeared from a city with no exits and no crime? Was she snatched away by the harpies? <sighs> it was three weeks ago. We ate our evening meal together, and I remember she seemed happy. In love. We went into our rooms, I went to sleep, and when I woke up, she was gone. That's it. I think so, yes. But she was very careful about keeping his identity a secret, even from me. Because our father had plans to marry her off, eventually, and even a rumor about her attachment to some mystery man might have ruined those plans. That doesn't surprise me. To him, it was like a prized cow wandering off from its paddock. He's upset, of course. But he says he's too busy with the election to help look for her. So he's letting Horatius do the heavy lifting. Some good that's done. I don't know. But it's been three weeks since she disappeared and he hasn't come forward. That might speak to a guilty conscience. All I know is, whoever he is, he's still here in the city. You really aren't from here, are you? All Roman women are named after their fathers. I think it's their way of branding us. Like cattle to be sold at market. His family name is Sentius, so I'm Sentia because I'm the eldest. And my little sister is formerly Sentia Minor, but she is affectionately known as Sentilla. I hope you're not insinuating I'm somehow pleased with her disappearance. Ugh, oh, you're awful! Get out of my villa and never speak to me again! Do I need to ask Horatius to escort you out of here? Get out, you horrid barbarian! Keep an eye out for Centilla, would. What now? Not that it's any of your business, but my loyalty is and always will be with Sentius. Unfortunately, I don't think my vote is going to make any difference today. See, Domitius has been going around town, shoring up votes for Maliolis with lies, bribery, and intimidation. The man's a savage, but he's a gladiator, so people fear and respect him more than they should. Sentius knows about it, of course, but he doesn't have the same rat cunning as Maliolis. This place will be different with that slays at the helm. But I try not to worry about things I can't change. I appreciate the thought, but you're new here, and I just can't see how you could make an impact in the time between now and the election this afternoon. In any case, if you're interested in the election, go and have a chat with Equitia. 
the Vestal Priestess. She'll be overseeing proceedings. All right. What were you two talking about? Don't play dumb. I saw you. Having a shady little chat with old man Sentius up on his balcony. What's he offering you? Money? Favours? What's your vote worth to him? What? You're throwing your lot in with him for free then? That's even worse. Mark my words, Maliolus is going to be magistrate by the end of the day. And if I tell him you've sided with that feeble old has-been, that you've been trying to undermine his hard-won victory, you'll have picked the wrong patron. Got it? Good. Then stay out of it. Nobody likes cap and murder foreigners interfering in an election. Ah, uh, Connor. The name's Domitius. You want to get to Maliolus? You go through me. Too bad. He's busy. Unless. No. You don't look like you could afford it. I'm glad you asked. See, he's a busy man, and this is an important day. He'll be inside, practicing his victory speech for tonight. Left me strict instructions he doesn't want to be disturbed. So if you want to see him, I'll need something valuable in return. Dunno. Something good. Bribe? That's such an ugly word. What I'm looking for is more of a... A tribute to me, your soon-to-be patron. Just make it good. When Maliolus wins the election, yeah? This place will change. You won't even want to leave. You'll see. I think it's gone on long enough, and Maliolus is going to put an end to it. Once he's elected.
We've already lined up the votes he needs to win. Just stay out of our way, and we won't have a problem. Maliolus, of course. If old man Sentius can't even protect his own daughter, how can we trust him to protect us? I think it's gone on long enough, and Maliolus is going to put an end to it once he's elected. He's going to announce it in his victory speech. Just you wait and see. Because if I tell you, and it gets out, it'll give old man Sentius a chance to interfere in our plans. And we can't have that. Old man Sentius got you already, did he? Well, I'm not talking to people in his family. Oh, sin culio mio. in Coolio Mio. Okay. 